The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Thank you to those who have led us in worship well this evening. As we now turn our attention to the Word of God, would you join me in prayer once again? Heavenly Father, we are thankful uh, for the truth of your word. Uh, many of those words we have lifted up in the form of song lyrics this evening. As we now open up our Bibles and, and read directly from your word, uh, we pray for the peace and the conviction that your word can bring. Father, if we need comfort tonight, may your word comfort us. If we need conviction this evening, I pray that your word would provide just that. Ultimately, Father, we pray that this time in your word would lead us, your people, your sheep, to your will. And Father, may nothing keep us from hearing your word. May nothing keep us from obeying your word. And Father, we open it now and we pray for the ears to hear and the hearts to receive your word to us. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, one of my favorite acts as a pastor uh, is to stand beside a casket at a graveside service and utter the words, the Lord is my shepherd, followed by the, the rest of the beloved words of Psalm 23. It, Psalm 23, it provides words of peace and comfort and an accurate depiction of God. As strange as that may sound, it's one of my favorite acts as a pastor because I know I'm speaking words of peace and comfort in a time of need. And the Bible is, is filled with many images of God. Psalm 23 gives us God as shepherd, but we can look around our pages of Scripture and find images everywhere. He's a rock or a strong tower. He's, he's a judge. He's a, he's a warrior. He's a father. He's a potter. If you've been around and heard a sermon or two of mine, you'll hear me often say, trying to grab a hold of all of these images and put them into one quick, punchy statement, I'll refer to God as our creator and sustainer and provider and redeemer. The Bible's filled with these images of God that are both helpful and full of truth. 
But we spend a number of Sunday evenings looking at this image of God as our shepherd. And it's this shepherd imagery that runs throughout both the Old and New Testament as, a, as if it's a thread that is holding all these images of God together. And we've spent a number of Sunday evenings walking verse by verse through Psalm 23. And as I conclude this series this evening, I want to take a jump from Psalm 23, but yet continue in the shepherd imagery that we see show up in the life and ministry of Jesus. Just as Psalm 23 provides peace and comfort. May the words of John 10 this evening provide us peace and comfort. I invite you to join me in John chapter 10. We'll begin reading at verse 11. John chapter 10, verse 11. If you've made your way there, can I hear a big, loud amen? amen? And then this is where, as you're still flipping there, I, I do have to make a, a bit of a confession. Um, it, I'm, I'm proud of this fact, but uh, this is a church where many people uh, take notes, and they take their notes directly in their Bible. I've preached this passage from John 10 before. Uh, you're going to look down at your notes, and you're going to say, wow, he preached a good sermon last time he preached this, and I'm going to agree with you. Uh, I looked at that sermon this week and uh, tried to change it up and, and shift a whole lot of things. But I said, no, I got it pretty accurate uh, the first time uh, around. So there's not going to be a whole lot new. There's going to be some new, uh, but a, not a whole lot new, but I think it's a helpful reminder. And it's also a fitting conclusion to our look at Psalm 23. So if you'd join me, John chapter 10, verse 11. The, the words um, of our Lord Jesus. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I laid down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. These last two verses are fascinating. The Jews heard these words. The Jews who heard these words were again divided. Many of them said, He is demon-possessed. And raving mad, why listen to him? But others said, These are not the sayings of a man possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Amen. As we conclude this series on the beloved Psalm 23, my first point to you this evening is that the Lord, our shepherd of Psalm 23, is the good shepherd of John 10. 
And I want us to pause here for a moment. Nothing that I'm about to say in these next few lines is going to grab you by surprise. But it is something I think we need to bring to the forefront time and time again. The New Testament, even though we call it the New Testament, it is not a new story. Rather, it's a continuation of the Old Testament story. Jesus is not a new and improved version of the God of the Old Testament. But rather, he's God in the flesh. As we see in this move from Psalm 23 to John 10, the Lord, our shepherd of Psalm 23, is indeed Jesus, the good shepherd of John 10. Next weekend, next Sunday is Mother's Day. Just a heads up for the men in the room. You've got a week. Uh, we won't have Sunday evening service next Sunday, but the Sunday to follow, uh, we're going to begin a new Sunday evening series on my favorite passage from the Bible, Colossians 1, 15 through 23. We're going to take one verse every Sunday evening. And that passage begins with this powerful line that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. That, that in Jesus we see God clearly. The Lord our shepherd of Psalm 23 is Jesus the good shepherd of John 10. Or, or, or you could say it this way. The Lord our shepherd who is trotting along green pastures in Psalm 23 is walking the streets of the New Testament. Or I'd make the argument that in fact he's walking the streets of Sulphur Springs today. The Lord, our shepherd of Psalm 23, is the good shepherd of John 10. And I would love to spend time uh, hanging on every syllable of the passage we just read, but tonight we'll, we'll just hit the highlights. My second word to you is there's an emphasis on good. Jesus is the good shepherd. And the preacher in me wants to play around with that a little bit. He's not the decent shepherd. He's not the, the mediocre shepherd. He's not the better than average shepherd. Out of the words, out of the mouth of Jesus, he describes himself, I am the good shepherd. And then to drive that home, Jesus begins this beautiful imagery of a comparison between a shepherd and a hired hand. Jesus I, I'm the, I'm the good shepherd. I'm not a hired hand. And he begins this comparison. What, what's the difference between the good shepherd and a hired hand? Well, first, the good shepherd displays ownership. When a wolf arrives, you know, when an enemy approaches the sheep pen, the good shepherd stands his ground. The good shepherd protects his sheep. Why? Because the sheep belong to him. They are his. He loves them. 
Now, the hired hand, when the wolf comes, runs away. Why? <laughs> because there's no ownership and no commitment. The difference between the good shepherd and a hired hand, well, first, the good shepherd displays ownership. Well, second, the good shepherd displays commitment. When the wolf attacks, the shepherd goes beyond just normal duty. He goes beyond the task list. Because he cares for his sheep. The hired hand has no desire to fight for the sheep. The good shepherd displays ownership and commitment, and the good shepherd displays sacrifice. When the wolf attacks, the, the good shepherd is willing to lay down his life. Think about this. You see the progression. Uh, it's ownership. Yes, these are his sheep. Uh, wolf attacks. The enemy's at the gates. There's a presence of an enemy. Those are my sheep. Moves from ownership to commitment. Uh, the shepherd's willing to stand in there. He's willing to fight off the wolf. But then it moves to sacrifice. The good shepherd willing to lay down his life. The hired hand, nowhere to be found. The good shepherd willing to lay down his life. It's a it's beautiful imagery. Yes, it's beautiful imagery, but it has profound implications for us this evening. When you face a time of need, the good shepherd is by your side. When you face the loss of a job, the good shepherd is by your side. When you face a hospital bed, the good shepherd is by your side. Side. When you face success, the good shepherd is by your side. When you experience, when you face failure, defeat, the good shepherd is by your side. There's an emphasis on good. My third word to you this evening is there's there's also an emphasis on relationship. I love verse 14. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. If you're looking for a verse to memorize this evening, and that would be a good one to circle, highlight, underscore. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Jesus stresses a relationship. And not only does he stress a relationship, he stresses a two-sided relationship. As the good shepherd, he knows his sheep, and as sheep in care of a good shepherd, the sheep know the shepherd. Now, we, we live in a social media world where we think we know people, but we really don't. It's always strange. I know you've had this experience where somebody follows you on some sort of social media platform. You haven't seen them in years, but you bump into them at a restaurant, and they start asking you about the trip you took last week. How do you know about that? It's like they've seen pictures of it. Uh, they, they think they know you, but they don't. And, and perhaps you think you know the person next to you, but you don't. Uh, 
This afternoon, I, I looked onto my own Facebook account, and uh, according to Facebook, I've got 2,201 friends. I knew I had looked that up before, so I did a quick search on my computer the last time I referenced that in a sermon. A few months ago when I referenced it in a sermon, I had 1,968 friends. Somehow in a category of a few months, I've developed 200 more friends. Uh, do they know me? Do I know them? No. Uh, the power of John 10 is God knows me. God knows me better than I know myself. And despite that, he gives me the ability to know him. That's a good shepherd. God knows you. God knows you better than you know yourself. And despite that, he gives you the ability to know him. It's about a relationship. And this passage says that there's room and God's sheep pen for you. Draw your attention to verse 16. Jesus says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, and I must bring them in also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Well, we can read down a, a little further, and we see that Jesus is speaking to what appears to be a large Jewish audience. And I think in the direct context here, Jesus is speaking to a large Jewish audience, and he's letting them know that, uh, yes, the Gentiles, the, the non-Jews, are going to be allowed into the sheep pen, whether they like it or not. But let's think about this for a minute. Jesus is saying, I have other sheep. And they are not of this pen. And there are some people that, that think God's sheep pen is really, 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 do you get what I'm doing here? Really, really big. And, and because they think God's sheep pen is really, 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 really big, they scream, everybody gets in. It doesn't matter how you live, doesn't matter what you believe, everybody gets in. And Jesus in other places will say, no, no, narrow is the way. And nobody gets into this pen unless they come through me. Now, on the other hand, there's some people that think God's sheep pen is really, really, really small. And because they think God's sheep pen is really, really, really small, they say, nobody gets in except me and people that think like me. And to that group, Jesus says, no, no, I've got other sheep out there, and I'm going to bring them in as well. 
What Jesus is stressing is that it's all about a relationship. He knows his sheep, and his sheep know him. And when the good shepherd calls his sheep by name, they follow because they know they trust the voice of the shepherd. My final word to you this evening is, will you follow Jesus, the good shepherd, willingly gave his life for you. No, no one took it from him. He laid it down for you. This is the way that John's gospel often tells the story. Jesus wasn't crucified. Jesus laid down his life. It's the other side of that same coin. Yes, Jesus was crucified, but John reminds us over and over again that he could have stopped it. But he willingly laid down his life. And in this passage, he stresses that he did that for his sheep. Now, I love how this passage ends. If your Bible's like mine, you know, the red letters stop at verse 18. Jesus stops speaking in verse 18, and then 19 and 20 and 21 shows us the reactions to what Jesus has just said. There's really two reactions. The, the people are divided. You, you read it right there in front of you. Some thought he was demon-possessed and raving mad. There's others that are left intrigued or, or perhaps convinced. They, they hear the one side say, this, this guy's demon-possessed or raving mad. That And I go, hold on a minute. Could someone who was demon-possessed open up the eyes of the blind? Two reactions. As, as I stand here this evening, I, I know that there are countless reactions to Jesus before me tonight. It is my prayer that you would respond to Jesus as your good shepherd. That you would recognize that you are a sheep in desperate need of a shepherd. That you are a sheep in a desperate need of a shepherd and you have a good one. And his name is Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, We thank you uh, for your grace towards us that you would call us by name. And Father, I pray um, it, your word tells us that you call us by name. Uh, so I pray that through the pages of Scripture this evening that we would hear you call us. Father, it is our prayer that we would hear that voice as the voice of the Good Shepherd and that we would trust our lives to your care. May nothing keep us from following you. We pray these things 
in the name of our good shepherd, our Lord and Savior. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.